Starting in 1799, my ancestors were brought to the San Fernando Mission. and They were part of the enslaved labor force and were baptized. Prior to that, though, we've traced back through San Fernando Mission records that some of our ancestors came from the village of Tuapu, which is modern-day Simi Valley. And then some came from the village of Chagoyanga, which is a uh, Tataviam village. So uh, I am uh, Fernandinho Tataviam and Ventureño Shumash. Hamanat Netawan, uh, I'm Alan Salazar. Uh, hello, I'm Alan Salazar. Uh, I get my native ancestry from my father's side of the family. And uh, for the last six generations, uh, my tribal ancestors have lived and been born in San Fernando, California. I'm on the Council of Elders with the Fernandino Tatabayam Band of Mission Indians. Uh, I've been involved with Native American uh, causes and issues most of my adult life. We are at the Oak Brook Shumash Museum in Thousand Oaks, California. We're just off of Westlake Boulevard on Lang Ranch Road. The museum has been in existence since the mid-90s, uh, 94, 95. My family has been involved with the museum since it first opened from day one. My aunt was on the board of directors when it first opened and she's still on the board of directors. It's a small museum. We're a nonprofit. They keep the doors open solely by donations. The Shumash are one of the largest tribes in California as far as numbers and territory, their land. So it goes uh, in the south all the way to Malibu, north 200 miles of prime coastline, uh, Ventura, Santa Barbara, up to about Morro Bay. They went inland into the mountains to almost the San Fernando Valley in, in our southern section. So several hundred million acres. Southern California has always been a highly populated area. When you get to the Los Angeles area, Santa Barbara to Long Beach, that's where all the large villages were, villages of over a thousand tribal people. The Los Angeles Basin has always been highly populated and heavily traveled. The trade routes became the 101, the 405, the 5, and the rivers were probably used more than the trails. So the LA River flows to the ocean and it was used with Thule reed canoes to paddle up and down. Thule's grow along the rivers. The center of it is a very soft, spongy, uh, pithy center, very lightweight. If I was making a Thule reed canoe, it would be approximately 12 feet long. They're basically the same as kayaks. They're very light. A Thule reed canoe weighs 50 or 60 pounds. You can build a Thule reed canoe in a weekend. One of the things I'm very proud of is starting in 1997, I became part of a small group of Shumash people that wanted to revitalize our Shumash canoe culture, our tamoles. So I've helped build canoes like these since 1997, and I've paddled them and have helped relearn those skills of building them, paddling in them, and navigating in them. During that mission period in the early 1800s, the Shumash used to build hundreds of canoes like this every year. By the 1830s, we had stopped building them, and it was because of that mission period where we were enslaved. So we used to go from the mainland up and down the coast and out to the islands where also our Shumash people, so Anacapa, Santa Cruz, Santa Rosa, and San Miguel Island were Shumash Islands. Somewhere around the mid-1830s, 1834, 1835, was, was one of the last times a traditional Shumash plank canoe, a tamole, had gone from the mainland to any of the islands. So on September 8th in 2001, I was part of a group of about 35, 40 of us that were gonna paddle a tamal from Channel Islands Harbor, which is Oxnard, California, to Santa Cruz Island. It took us over 11 hours, and we left about 3.45 in the morning. And when we accomplished that, it was the first time in over 150 years. 
the Tongva Gabrielino, which is a tribe from the Los Angeles Basin, and the Chumash were the only tribes on the whole west coast that made ocean canoes like this. I don't think we're ever going to stop people wanting to come to California. It's just too nice of a place to live. But uh, at some point we're going to run out of water. Tribal nations, tribal groups, tribal people need to be heard, I think, more. It's not only building more wisely, it's also managing our open spaces in a more effective manner. Maybe we can get the water flowing in the LA River again and, 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 and I'll build some uh, Thule Reed canoes. There's something about being on the water that it, it's just, uh, it's just powerful. Native Narratives is brought to you with the support of M Squared O.